immovable rock, omnipotent, powerful, awesome Lord, victorious warrior, commanding King of kings, mighty conqueror, and the only time, the only time I ever saw him Was when he ran to me He took me in his arms Held my head to his chest And said my son's come home again Lifted my face Wiped the tear from my eyes With forgiveness in his voice He said son Do you know I still love you? He caught me by surprise when God ran. The day I left home, I knew I'd broken his heart. And I wondered if things would ever be the same. Then one night, I remembered his love for me And down the dusty road ahead I could see It was the only time The only time I ever saw him run Was when he ran to me He took me in his arms Held my head to his chest and said, My son's come home again. Lifted my face, wiped the tear from my eyes with forgiveness in his voice. He said, Son, do you know I still love you? He caught me by surprise and he brought me to my knees. God ran. I saw him run to me. I was so ashamed. So far away Now I know He's been waiting For this day I saw him run to me He took me in his arms Held my head to his chest And said my son's come home again Lifted my face Wiped the tear from my with forgiveness in his voice He said, my son's come home again He ran to me He took me in his arms Held my head to his chest He said, my son's come home again Lifted my face Wiped the tear from my eyes With forgiveness in his voice He said, so He called me son He said, son, do you know I still love you? He caught me by his surprise And he brought me to my knees When God ran I saw him run to me
Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. As always, it's our joy and delight to come your way and bring God's Word to you. We've been talking about the Father's love and we're going to continue uh, in this journey of just exploring uh, the immeasurable, unconditional and unlimited love of God, the greatness of God's love and learning how to respond to uh, God as our Heavenly Father. We had mentioned last uh, in our previous episode that uh, our capacity to be loved and to love has been broken just because of sin and because of all the things that have uh, gone on in this world. And uh, what we must understand is that the Lord Jesus Christ came not only to demonstrate God's love for us, the great, immeasurable, unconditional, unlimited love of God for us, not only did He demonstrate that on the cross, but the Lord also deals with our capacity to be loved and to love. He brings healing to that. He makes us whole in every way, including this area of learning to receive love and learning to release love. In Isaiah, the 53rd chapter, the fifth verse tells us, uh, the punishment for our peace, for our wholeness was upon him. So the punishment he bore brings wholeness into our lives and he heals even this capacity or this area of our lives. Now, uh, we mentioned also that many times we take a very wrong posture in our relating to God. You know, we tend to relate to God with wrong mindsets. So some, some of us may be as the prodigal, some of us as a slave, some of us like an orphan, some of us like the, um, the elder son who thinks everything happens because of merit. Some of us are like the outcast who say, a God uh, you know, doesn't want me to come near to him. Or, or some of us are like people who've been wounded and hurt. And so we don't want to even come near to God because you know, there are things in our hearts that uh, have caused that hurt towards God himself and, and so on. And so we have these different wrong mindsets and postures that actually hinder us in our relationship with the Heavenly Father. Now, we could be going on as believers. You know, we could be going to church. We could be part of our, uh, in doing things in the congregation, in being involved in ministry. We could be reading the Bible and praying and all of that. But many of that is being done and it's being motivated out of an incorrect understanding of who God is. We may be motivated uh, because, you know, we want to earn God's love. We may be motivated maybe by fear, the wrong kind of fear, and so on. But we need to change that, and we must learn uh, to respond out of love to Him and as recipients of this unconditional love that He has given to us. So that's what I want to talk about on our program today. I want to talk about our Heavenly Father's true picture. Now, so that we understand what God is really like. You know, our picture of God, uh, our, our revelation of God will determine our relationship with God. If our revelation or, or our picture of God is, uh, is wrong, we have a wrong idea of God, we will take a wrong posture in our relationship to God and we will try to relate to Him in ways He really doesn't want us to relate to Him uh, in, a manner, in manners in which He does not want us to relate to Him. But if we have a correct revelation of God, a true picture of God, then we'll begin to relate to Him the right way. In Matthew, the seventh chapter, verses 7 through 11, here Jesus draws a comparison between an earthly father and a heavenly father. He says, you know, those of you who are earthly fathers, if your son comes and asks him for bread, would you give him a stone? If he asks you for uh, a fish, would you give him a snake? If he asks you for an egg, would you give him a scorpion? And he says, look, you, if you being evil, know how to give good things to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good things to those who ask him? 
In other words, he's saying, you know, the, the earthly relationship is only a small, a very insignificant, actually, uh, a very insignificant parallel, a representation of the, the greatness of our Heavenly Father. He says, how much more your Heavenly Father is so much better than earthly fathers. Unfortunately, as we had mentioned, you know, some of us have had bad experiences with our earthly parents. Uh, our, when we talk about our earthly father or our earthly mother, we've had bad experiences, and then we tend to carry that on into our relationship uh, towards our Heavenly Father. And so I want to encourage you on the program today is to re- release yourself of that and instead see God for who He really is. Have or, or receive a true picture of your Heavenly Father. And I'm going to, in a, in a, in a, in a few, you know, few minutes, I'm going to just try to paint a, a picture of our Heavenly Father. What do we see about God? God is an unchanging Heavenly Father as opposed to an unpredictable earthly parent. You know, sometimes we've had earthly parents who are unpredictable. Morning, they're somewhat. Afternoon, they're somewhat. And evening, they're totally different. And you don't know which mood they are in. And so you don't know how to relate to them. But God doesn't have moods like that. He is an unchanging heavenly father. The Bible says in James 1.17, he is a father of lights who has no variableness. He's not changing from time to time. And, he, and, and there is no shadow of turning. He doesn't even turn a little bit, not even a little bit. He's unchangeable. As we, and so we can always be, can relate to him knowing that he's the same all the time. He's a father who understands us, and yet he will always understand us. So uh, that's a true picture of God. Another aspect of God's true picture, he's an unfailing heavenly father, as opposed to parents who have let us down. For some of us, in our uh, moments of dire need, when we really needed the help and the support of our parents, they probably said, okay, you're on your own. You made the choice, so you live with it. And so they let us down for whatever reason. But that's not who our Heavenly Father is. He is an unfailing Heavenly Father. Hebrews 13, 5 says, God says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. That's God's guarantee. I will not fail you. And so he's a father who is always there for us, as opposed to what we may have experienced uh, uh, in earthly relationships. Thirdly, he's a bountiful and a generous father as opposed to, you know, parents who might be stingy. You know, sometimes parents give to us, but then they scold us when they give. Don't come back and ask me for that again. Or that's all I can give. Don't ask me for anything more. Now, there may be practical limitations or they may just not want to give and so on. We've We've all had our own share of experiences with earthly parents. But God is not like that. The Bible tells us that God is a good God. He's a bountiful and a generous father. Uh, like we said in Matthew 7 and verse 11, Jesus said, How much more will your heavenly Father give good things to those who ask Him? So He's saying, I want you to see God as a heavenly Father who's bountiful, who's generous, and He wants to give good things to those who ask Him. Many of us have a wrong mindset. We think of God as a stingy God, as a miserly God, or as a God who gives one and two. If you ask Him for the third thing, He'll say no. And those are all our wrong ideas, our wrong uh, experiences that we've superimposed on God. Don't put your experience on earth and impose that on God. Your picture of God must come purely from His Word. What do we see in His Word? In James chapter 1, verses 5 through 7, James says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And then he tells us something about God. He says, God who gives generously, He gives liberally, and He gives to all, and He gives without abrading or without scolding. So what do we see about God there? We see that He's a generous God, and He's a God who gives to everyone. He's not partial in His giving, and He gives without scolding. He doesn't scold you and say, why did you ask me for so much? Next time, don't ask me so much. He's not like that. He's a generous God. He gives to everyone, and He gives liberally, and He gives without scolding, is what James says. So that's the picture of God. When you see your Father in heaven, see Him as a bountiful, generous Father. He's a Father of abundant grace as opposed to parents who may be very task-oriented, who, are, who may be taskmasters, who may be very authoritarian, who may be sometimes even abusive, and uh, they would want us to earn everything. And so for some of us, we have no concept of grace because everything in our life was earned. 
We are self-made people, and it started back home when everything with our parents was earned. If you did well, you got something. But that's not who our Heavenly Father is. The Bible tells us that God is a God of grace, God who is rich in mercy for his great love with, with which he loved us. And from that, he, he, as a God of grace, he's released mercy and he's released uh, grace upon our lives. That's who God is. And, th- and he's a father who enjoys you and he wants you to enjoy him purely based on grace. That is, he's a God who accepts us, who gives things to us because he wants to, not because we earn it, not because we have deserved it. The next thing we can say about God is that he is an accepting father, as opposed to parents who have actually rejected us, who have maybe, you know, been very suspicious of us. They have been very unaccepting of us. And, uh, uh, you know, everything was questioned. Everything was suspect. Everything we did, good or bad, came under the scanner. And so we've grown up in those ways where, you know, we have been, we felt really, you know, parents don't accept me. They're they're unaccepting of me for who I am. But God is not like that. He is an accepting father. Ephesians 1 and verse 6 says, He has made us accepted in the beloved. That means he has accepted you and me in Christ. In Christ, you have been welcomed. You have been embraced. You have been totally brought in, completely brought in into the very presence of God. Uh, and he's accepted you and me, and he delights in you and me. A few more things about uh, the true picture of God. He is a merciful father. He is a God who is slow to anger, who is abounding in mercy, as opposed to parents who, have been, who, may, be, who may have been very short-tempered, who may have been very judgmental, uh, and who may have been uh, very harsh on us for every little mistake we make. You know, so here's a big shift that we, you and I have to make when we relate to God. We sometimes think God is, is, is like that. He's punish, he will punish us for every little thing we do. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible tells us in Psalm 103 and verse 8 that the Lord is merciful and gracious. He is slow to anger and abounding in mercy. That, is, that means God is not waiting to strike you down for every single mistake you make. He is waiting to extend mercy to you and me. He said God is abounding in mercy. And so we need to see God as a God, as a Father who is so merciful, which means if I make a mistake, I just run to Him, not run away from Him. I run to Him because His mercy will rewrite everything. His mercy will keep me from receiving what I deserve, but instead give me what I do not deserve, even the, the, the good things that I do not deserve. The Bible says it's because of the Lord's mercies. We are not consumed. His, his compassions, they never fail. Uh, his mercies, they are new every morning. That's in Lamentations chapter 3, uh, verses 22 and 23. God is a redeeming Father. That means He not only is merciful to us, but he redeems us. He brings us out of the problems we've got ourselves into. He rescues us from that. As opposed to parents who say, well, you've got to live with the consequences of your actions. So you made that choice, you live through it. Parents sometimes are unable to help us just because uh, of their limited abilities. But not so with God. God is a God who is able to redeem us. So we've messed up. We've put ourselves into the net. We may have fallen into the pit. We may have, you know, we may have gotten ourselves into all kinds of trouble. And God just doesn't say, okay, you're there. Work your way out. No. He says, I'll bring you out. That's redemption. To re- restore us to our original place. Bringing us out of what we've put ourselves into. In Isaiah 63 and verse 16, the prophet says, Doubtless you are our father, though Abraham was ignorant of us, and Israel does not acknowledge us. You, O Lord, are our father, our redeemer from everlasting. So you're our father, and as a father, you are our redeemer. You bring us out, uh, and you always give us another chance. You restore us. He is an empowering father. That means he is a father who gives to us and not withholds from us. 
Our Heavenly Father, He thinks good thoughts towards us. He has good plans for us, and He trusts us with what is His, as opposed to a parent who would not be willing to give into our hands, who would not be willing to empower us and let us rise up to our full potential and be what we are called to be and become what we should become. You know, some parents could stifle us. They could keep us down. They could restrain us. They could constrain us. They could cage us and say, no, you're not going to go and be who you are supposed to be. And for whatever reason, sometimes it's out of selfishness. Sometimes they want to live their life through us and their dream through us, and they keep us from becoming what we are called to be, but not so with God. God, as our Heavenly Father, as an empowering Father, He releases His grace, abundant grace, His power, His strength, so that He wants us to become all that He has designed us to be. And the last thing I want to mention is this, that He is an infinite Father. That means He's Jesus beyond what we've ever thought, what we could ever imagine. He never grows old. He never grows tired and never grows weary. He never gives up on us. He is both father and mother. I mean, He is more than what we could ask. He, he is more than what we have uh, conceived in our, uh, our ability to conceive in our minds. And what I've just listed out uh, on the program today are just a few aspects of the true picture of God. And He desires for us to see Him as He really is because our revelation of God is going to determine our relationship with God. When you can see Him for who He truly is, and when you see Him uh, uh, as your Heavenly Father, who is merciful, who is generous, who is empowering, who is gracious, and all that we talked about, your relationship with God will go to a totally new level. You will be so liberated. You will be so set free in experiencing His love and living and walking in a relationship with Him that is close and intimate, the kind of relationship He longs to have with you. But you and I must reject self-deceptions and Satan's lies. Sometimes we've deceived ourselves with theology that we've created, which is actually very wrong. Sometimes we've heard all kinds of sermons and all kinds of misconceptions about God. And I want you to be willing to reject your own self-deceptions. Get rid of your wrong ideas about God. Get rid of all your wrong thoughts about God, your wrong picture of God. Get rid of it. And some of it are just pure lies from the devil. Satan is a father of lies, and he would love for us to believe things about God that are untrue. You know, Satan knows God for who he really is, but he does not want us to believe God the way he knows God is. He lies to us. He tells us everything that God is really is not, and he wants us to believe those kinds of things. Now, you need to reject those lies. Are there things that you need to change in your picture of God, how you see God, from what you've heard this, on this program? Are there things that you need to change? I want you to take some time to pray about it. Hi there. We're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God. Before we close the program today, Let's pray together. And I want to leave, I just want to pray for us that we would change our picture of God and begin to see God for who He really is as our Heavenly Father, who is so great, who is so merciful, so kind, so loving, so generous, so redeeming. And, and that we're going to relate to Him based on who He is. I'm also going to pray and release God's Word for healing for miracles, for deliverance to take place. And I believe that as I speak for all of you who are under the sound of my voice, that if you will connect with God through faith, miracles will begin to take place in your life. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that we could talk a little bit today about who you really are and begin to change our perception, our understanding of who you are and begin to see you 
as our Heavenly Father and see you as your word presents you to be. Help us to relate to you the way you want us to relate to you, Father. I pray that wrong ideas, self-deceptions, lies of the enemy will come down. We will reject them out of our lives and embrace the truth of your word. And also right now, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over every work of the devil. And I say, devil, I bind you and I bind your work over the lives of people listening to me right now. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over every sickness, every disease. I take authority over every infirmity in your life, in your body, and I command it to go. I command eyes to be restored. I command mental illnesses and problems in the brain to be healed and made all whole. And I command you to be released from those illnesses in your mind and in your brain. I command healing to the bones and to the nerves. I command healing to the joints and for your joints to be free from pain. In the name of Jesus, I command you to be released from every sickness and disease and every work of the devil. Receive your healing. I command lungs to clear up. I command arteries to clear up and to be unclogged and to become free. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I release healing miracles by the power of Jesus' name and by the power of His Holy Spirit. Receive now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. And until next time, remember, live life to Jesus' name.